Well, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me today. We are going to talk about the awesome subject of power washing. I actually love to do that work. Um, I've got a project that I'm staring down the barrel at, and uh, we're, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and then we will go over a, a couple of bits and odds and ends and pieces and a couple of machines and talk about those if you're trying to make a decision on what kind of power washer you'd like to buy. I can offer you two, two examples here, so I, I guess that's the best I can do for you. Um, we've got my little red one here that is pushing every bit of 10 years old. Love this machine. This thing is awesome, all right? Here's our new machine. Here is, uh, we'll call it the, uh, the circle scrubber. And then I've got a new hose that I bought for that machine, which does not fit that machine. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit too. So I got a little bit surprised by that, but I knew I was gonna get another power washer and hopefully it'll fit the new one, right? To extend the hose length out to a total of about 50 feet. So we'll, we'll check that out. Let's spec this project. So we have this house that has a considerable deck space on it. And we are about six houses away from the ocean, uh, that being the Gulf of Mexico. And that introduces an incredible amount of uh, humidity to the whole environment here. And I'm gonna poke you up. Um, we're gonna take a walk around the deck so you just get a sense of that, right? What I've been doing is maintaining it all along, like little bit by little bit um, with the red machine. It, it's just it's just too much. I, I can't really, it'd take me forever to do the whole deck. And the whole deck actually needs a good power washing. Uh, which is a pretty common affair down here. So I not only want to do the initial cleaning, I also want to be able to maintain it uh, going forward with the larger machine and just do the whole thing, right, with a, you know, a reasonable period of time. Um, it, it, it grows a green uh, a mold or a, um, you know, some kind of an organism, I guess you might say, on it. And we'll take a look at it, and then we'll also take a look at the, uh, the, maybe the challenges of doing that. So we are right now standing here seven feet above sea level. The house is actually just under 14 feet above that. So to in total, the deck is 21 feet uh, above sea level. And the whole idea of it being up on piers is for storm surge and so forth coming through. And then the house wouldn't be damaged in theory, except everything in the garage gets crushed by, a, a, say, a hurricane or something like that. So that is uh, that is the nature of the beast here. So let's look at some of this green stuff, and I'll uh, show you what I want to try and accomplish by getting that cleaned up. All right, pretty good view there. That's the green stuff that needs to come off. Some of that comes off very, very easily. Some of it doesn't come off at all. So... I want to, let's say, mow the lawn here, right, underneath this deck and get all of this business cleaned up and uh, removed, right? And then, um, you know, it'll, it'll, it will require maintenance and I get that and that's why I wanted to buy the bigger machine so I wouldn't spend my entire life or all of my days off cleaning up this deck and, and keeping it in this fashion. So let's go upstairs, we'll take a look at the deck itself, um, the surface that we actually see on a day-to-day -day basis, and, um, and we'll see what that's all about. Now, I do, as I mentioned, I've done a lot of work with the red machine here, but I, I just, the whole thing is just way overwhelming for that particular piece of equipment. Um, and you can see the staircase here has been done, and I um, mean, it looks, I think, really, really great. It, it does a good job, but, you know, you're only, you're only doing these things uh, little by little, piece by piece, in order to you know make that happen. So this area does not typically get weathered all that much because it's uh, underneath this covering. But as soon as you start to step out into the sun and what has more exposure to uh, weather than some of the other pieces of the deck, you start to see. Now there's uh, we can really see it on edge, right? I hope you guys can see this in the camera. But you see all the green stuff. That, that's all got to come off, right? So we've got both the front and the back, or let me say that again. We've got the underside and the top of this deck needs to be power washed to get this green stuff off. So the rest of this deck that wraps around the house is, uh, what is that, about four feet or so, I think is, it's close to it and maybe not entirely. A bunch of green stuff. And here's some more of it. It's just pretty much everywhere, right? Uh, this green stuff just tends to stick and stay. And you can see on my neighbor's house right here, a lot of green goop that sticks to this wood. It needs to be cleaned up. So, make our way all the way around. Every bit of this needs to be cleaned up. And then you can see where I've done sort of a side-by-side -side comparison of what's been done with the small red machine. It looks, uh, kind of new-ish, not new, but new-ish. 
and I've always been pleased with the results, but I got, uh, I've got a bigger uh, can of worms here to take care of uh, than that. I think that red machine can uh, handle. This took a hit. I saw in another video uh, that a guy did where this was smashed as well. He had all kinds of problems. The thing looked like it had been through a rock tumbler, um, but it did smash this as well. So rather than send this back, I'm going to hope that nothing inside here like a valve or something uh, touches that, and I'll see if I can reach out to them and get a new one uh, and, uh, and resolve it, right? But as far as damage is concerned, this is all I can see so far. The manual says this thing takes uh, 20 ounces. I've got one pint, which is 16, so I'm going to assume that the manual is incorrect. We're not even touching the stick yet. We're almost out here. Manual says 20 ounce. I've got 16, which makes no sense. It's low. It doesn't only now it's only three quarters up the stick. Why would you do that? Let me go see if I got some more. Ooh, that holds a lot of gas. That'll be helpful. Not so many refills. All right, we've got gasoline, we've got oil, we've got a water supply, and it is turned on. We're going to bleed the hose to make sure that the air is out of it. I think it will process through there. The other little red one, it doesn't process the air out until the actual engine is running. We're going to try it both ways, then we're going to give this thing the uh, command to fire and see what happens. So let's just run for a second. It'll spit, spit, spit. And... Um, you know, I always do this because when the tip is on, it's restricting the amount of air and or water going through, and it'll just lose power, right, while it burps an air bubble. It just takes forever. So you're over there like five minutes into your job, and the thing is trying to get the air out, right? So you, you can see the stream. It, it spooges out every now and again. It's got air in it. All right, let's say good now. Let's start this thing up and see where we're at. Choke out. On. Okay, so during the warm-up, um, what I did was, is I couldn't help myself, right? I had you guys off, off camera, and, um, and I just uh, pulled the trigger without a tip on it here on the wand, right? And it spooched out a bunch more air, which is kind of how the red one works, right? So no, no big, great big surprise there. Then I stuck the tip on this thing, right? You happen to use the green one, and that's about a minimum, that's about a middle of the road uh, style of, of tip as far as its fan, its fan size. Man, this thing's got some kick to it, right? Uh, so this machine is about 35% more powerful um, as far as its, um, its output at the uh, wand end as compared to the red one. I can feel that. I think I have properly spec this machine and having not used it yet, right? But just based on feel alone, this thing is banging out some pressure, right? So I'm really, really impressed with that. I can't wait to give it a shot. 
So we'll look at my project here and you know the scope of it all and we'll take that in and then we'll do some tests, right? See if this thing actually does what it's supposed to do, why I bought this thing. Right, so while this thing was warming up and I had water and everything going to it, I, uh, I, I'm sitting there watching all of a sudden this water starts spraying all over the place, right? It's all, it's all over here. It was coming off this, uh, it's like, I believe this is like an overpressure valve, something like that. I'll have to get into that and look a little bit more closely at it. But I think that the motor was um, trying to relieve pressure uh, off of the pump, or the pump was trying to relieve pressure. So it shot out there. Um, just want to be mindful of that. It didn't take very long for that to occur. I'm talking inside of five minutes, right? So if you were to run your machine and uh, you've got that somewhere over where you aren't really paying much attention to it, and you know, you're having a conversation with somebody or whatever, right? That thing's gonna start squirting water all over the place because it's starting to overpressure. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I need to verify that, but it, you know, it stopped after like five seconds or so. It, it relieved its pressure and then it went on. Um, and there is no throttle on this thing. Um, it's just, it's either go or no go, right? It's how it works. Let's take this thing for a test drive just down here on the slab. Take a look at specs. This thing is like 30, about 33, 35% more powerful in theory based on numbers alone uh, than the red one. And I'm telling you, this thing kicks like a mule, man. I mean, this thing really goes. You can feel the difference between the little red one and the big black one here, right? So let's look at some numbers. All right, this thing started making noise after about 10 minutes of runtime, and look what we got. We got some engine hold down bolts that have just completely come undone and they fell out as you see them here. So, that might be something to check out if you buy this machine. Uh, inexplicable why that would be that way, right? Um, somebody put those nuts and bolts in, and I'm betting you could find the guy who did that. While I was sort of wandering around here thinking about what I wanted to talk about next, I noticed a couple of things. One is that this gas cap uh, was just simply dripping gas from here down to this bar. Uh, I. It wasn't too tight and it wasn't too loose and it's not overfilled. So I don't know if this is going to be a continuing problem or what to expect here. I just broke the seal, looked at it, and uh, couldn't figure out how the heck that thing would be leaking or why it would be leaking. There's gas in there, but it's way down, right? It's just not, it's just not overfilled. So that's a, a little strange, right? So there's that. And then I noticed over here on the pump, it says use SAE 15W40. Okay, well that is a weight of oil and there is no mention of this thing taking oil anywhere in the documentation. I've gone through the three books uh, and certainly during the, the, the fast startup uh, procedure, there's no mention of it, right? I don't know if this thing has oil in it or not. I'll tell you what, it gets hot. I don't know if that's just bleed off from the, uh, the engine case or what, but uh, it's very, very hot. So I don't know if I got a problem or not here. It's just kind of strange. All right, let's talk specs side by side with these machines. All right, this machine is about 10, possibly 11 years old. We've got a 158cc engine on this. It's a Briggs & Stratton and it is run flawlessly uh, from the very beginning. Uh, here's our pressure with 2200 max PSI and gallons per minute is 2.2. Uh, we got some holders and whatnot up here. That's the original hose that came with this 
uh, machine. This is the original one that came with the machine. The only problem I've ever really had with this machine was is that the uh, wand started to leak and it leaked right here. At this juncture point, uh, and I pulled it apart, there was a bad O-ring in there. I replaced that. It was not quite the right O-ring, so I wrapped it with some uh, plumber's tape and it hasn't leaked since. So that is basically what I'm into uh, for as far as you know, like repair work, it's, it's almost non-existent. Um, this one will does have a, a soap siphon on it. This is not an onboard tank for you to put soap in and then feed that into the hose. It, it doesn't work that way at all. And in fact, it is the same way over on the other machine where you put a bucket or whatever solvent that you want to run through this thing and you put a special tip on the end of the stick uh, in order to uh, cause it to siphon up out of the container that you're using. Um, I used a, I, I tied all this up with a, with a piece of dowel rod because whenever you coil up this kind of hose, it, it just, it has a memory to it. It stays coiled, so it's never really quite feeding the way you want. And if I, you know, you strap it onto a stick and you can, sh you know, sort of shove that down in the bucket and then you're, you're good to go with that. Um, and it's exactly the same way. And I believe, I haven't really looked it up, but I believe that the, the siphon for the soap is right here. Uh, so it's easy to get to, and there is a little piece of clear hose that's come with the machine, so that's been covered for you. Um, black machine, all right, so we've got 3,200 PSI at 2.5 gallons per minute, and if we come down here, we've got a Honda engine, and it is rated at 190 cc's. So, you know, that's where I'm sort of getting my uh, my, my 33, 35% more power out of, out of this thing uh, as compared uh, to this one. So, yeah, so that's it. And uh, there is no uh, primer bulb on this thing. This is either a start and run or off. You've got two options, off or on, and that's how it works. Whereas this one, you actually have a, um, a throttle uh, adjuster on it, which I dare say is kind of nice. Uh, <coughs> and it also has a... Uh, a primer bulb, right, to help you get some gas into the uh, carburetor if this thing has been sitting up for a while. Uh, it's always worked really, really well. Again, you know, we're in for 10 years and this thing is still as pliable and plush as, as it was on day one is the way I would describe it. So it works very, very well. Um, the tank is, I would say, undersized for this. Um, if you're not paying attention, you do run out of gasoline uh, occasionally and then you've got the unenviable task of getting the engine primed again so that it starts back up. So I've run this thing out of gas, I don't know how many times, uh, happens a lot. Uh, this tank is actually quite a bit bigger, right? I mean, I was really surprised at how much it took out of my gas can. Uh, so very, very nice, very cool. Uh, I'm not a fan of uh, pneumatic tires. They tend to always be flat as soon as you want to use the machine, then you've got to go deal with that. We're not going four wheeling. It's one of the few times that I ever actually prefer a, either a plastic tire or a non uh, pneumatic tire at the very least right so you're not constantly dealing with this air pressure uh, problem because these machines tend to sit for a minute after you've used them and, you know I'm using it maybe maybe two or three times a year in, in the, the air runs out of the tires it seems like it happens all the time uh, so not a really big fan of that I don't really see the benefit of a pneumatic tire on this uh, on this machine at all to be honest with you so uh, there you go. Oh, one more thing on the uh, new machine. Uh, we, we've got some uh, some little holders for the tips. I, I, I don't use these. Uh, I keep that stuff in a separate container. Uh, it just rattles and vibrates and there's a lot going on over here when you're not watching and I don't need my uh, tips to be, uh, you know, all over the ground, lost in grass or, uh, you know, some other hard to find, hard to look at space. So that's, um, you know, they, they do supply it and that's your hose hook uh, for your hose storage, and um, that's you know pretty much uh, pretty much it for a, a side by side comparison, right?
I call a result. Let's take a look at it from a different angle. Uh, still wet, of course, right? And as I mentioned here, you see this, how this green stuff, it, it sort of, uh, it stayed, right? So I'm going to have to sort of hand do that. Um, but some of the green stuff comes off and some doesn't, right? It's a weird, it's a weird bit of business. But man, I am so impressed with this, right? This is, I, I just hope this, the camera's picking it up. I think that it is. The difference of uh, the before and after. And then you can see a lot of the pulp will start to build up here. Uh, right in here, right? That's a bunch of goop that has to be rinsed off. And that's actually a layer of wood. Uh, I encountered that in my initial uh, video when I first did my Red Machine video 10, 11 years ago. Uh, the wood pulp, it, it just builds up, right? It has to be rinsed off uh, in addition to the dirt itself. Let's look at the deck after it's been dried. Uh, a vast improvement, but man, do we have a lot of streaks, right? We've got some problems here that need to be addressed, and I'm feeling like it's user error, right? Not being familiar with the tool knowing what it needs, when it needs it, and how to actually control it to get the result that I'm looking for. Um, it's particularly bad up here, which is pretty much where I started. Uh, if you were stopping the thing in, let's see, let's find a, a circular pattern. If you stop the thing with your trigger finger uh, holding the button down, you end up with this right here, which is, you know, sort of a scoring effect. Uh, you don't want to do that, right? So anytime you stop that thing, that thing's, you have to release the trigger. Um, and, and I find that to be, you're going to have to really stay on top of your game in order to do that. Um, some of the green stuff just didn't want to come off. I did come back and hand uh, wand this thing and still didn't quite get it all, right? Some of it comes, some of it doesn't. Uh, I've been working on the fence all the way down the line here, and that's looking pretty good. I uh, need to be up on a... Uh, 12 foot ladder on the other side of this railing uh, in order to get the rest of it you can see where you know it stops and then you know you got to get in there and get get that stuff from the other side so that's kind of where we're at there and um, I, I but I think it has uh, tremendous poten potential as long as I learn how to operate the tool properly and uh, and do what I think the deck needs in order to accomplish the goal oh here's some here's some big circles right so that's right where I started off, didn't know a thing about this thing and uh, punched it. And So the best result that I've been able to achieve so far with the uh, round Wordly gig thing is to definitely treat it like a floor buffer, right? So that you don't get the streaking, uh, you know, mowing the lawn was my initial thought and that, that doesn't work at all. So here's, we, we've got a damp deck here and, uh, and I'm seeing very little streaking, but I am seeing some parts that it didn't quite lift up on. And then compared to, you know, some of the decking that, that hasn't been done at all. Uh, it's a dramatic, dramatic difference. And, you know, I, I would tend to look at this as more of a process to clean this up than in a single singular event. Um, you know, just kind of keep hitting it until you get the result that you're looking for. But I, I'm really, really happy with that. Um, and, and again, you don't, you don't want to stop, right? You don't want to stop in the middle with your hand on the trigger. Because that thing will just, uh, it'll leave a, a circular pattern in it that we don't really want. And you can see here too, is, is that I've missed some spots that i got to get up against the house because the Whirligig thing can't actually get to, uh, but what was that, about two inches off the, uh, uh, off the house itself. So uh, let's take a look at it and, um, and I'll show you how I'm doing it to get this result. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I do hope that you got something out of that. I, I would have to say that this was a very uh, successful day. I love the black machine. I still love the red machine. It, it's just I can't push that beyond what its uh, design capabilities were. Uh, if you want to buy the red machine, go get it, man. It's, it's, it's awesome. Um, or, or it's a functional equivalent, right? We're 10 years later than, than that machine was actually purchased. So, you know, find something that's, that's relatively uh, similar to it. Power washers, I don't think you can have a home anymore without one, right? It just does such an amazing job. It's like a chainsaw, right? If you have a chainsaw, everything's a tree to a guy, right? It's like, I'm going to cut some stuff down. With a power washer, everything needs to be cleaned. And I think that was uh, pr pretty evident here. And I've got me a big job here. So uh, very, very... Um, 
positive result, especially that Whirly Gig thing. That thing was about 75 bucks, right? I mean, I think that was absolutely worth it as far as the time that uh, I, I spent cleaning up. We'll take a look at it just the finals just in a minute here. And then I'm going to do the whole house, right? So uh, I'm not going to include that in the video. It's getting a little long. Um, so love that thing. The uh, the machine itself, the black machine, uh, about uh, in the 450 range, somewhere in there, right? So, you know, it's not going to break the bank, but it's not exactly what I would call um, cheap either, right? So, you know, keep that in mind. All right, final, final view. Let's look at it, right? A little damp business going on in here. We got gray. A lot of gray deck right and then we move over into the brown side of things and clean that up doing the buffer method we'll call it that the buffer method uh, just completely makes it more smooth even clean love the look of that uh, did the whole railing this afternoon and did half of the horizontal surface and we've got a little bit of touch up to do here no big deal and then we go off into gray and then the railing itself has been uh, finished out throughout the uh through the whole side of the house so you know as far as a a time savings oh my god what power you know <laughs> you, you you can never have enough power right you can never have enough power and that was definitely proven today love the thing Thanks for watching. Give me a like and a subscribe if you got something out of it. I appreciate it. It helps me out on YouTube. Bye.